Broadley at Johnson Elementary School, and this is my fourth grade class. Today, boys and girls, we are going to look at the multiplication problem 8 times 2 and 8 times 4. Once you have an answer, I want you to put a thumbs up on your chest. Once you have an answer for both problems, 8 times 2 and 8 times 4. Once you have more than one strategy to solve this problem, I want you to put two fingers on your chest. If you have three strategies, I want you to put three fingers on your chest. Okay, I'm waiting for all thumbs up. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Who would like to give me an answer for the problem? One of the problems, Jada? I will give you answer 16 for 8 times 2. 8 times 2 equals 16 of this one answer. Is there any other answers that you have for 8 times 2? Or does everyone agree? Can everyone show me they agree if they agree with 8 times 2? Okay, how about 8 times 4? Byron? 32. 32. 32. Does anyone uh, uh, agree with 8 times 4 equals 32? Anyone disagree? Does anyone have any other answers for these two problems? Okay. Can somebody defend one of these answers? Defend. Can someone defend one of these answers? Yes, ma'am. So for 8 times 4, I'm going to write 8 times 4 over here. What Angie just said, she said 16 plus 16 equals 32. What type of math did Angie just do? What type of math did Angie just do? Can I have a quiet hand, Sanaya? Addition. Addition. Do we call? Is there a special name for that? Is there a special name for that kind of um, that kind of addition? Mm -hmm. Repeated addition. Okay. Any other strategies? Any other strategies to solve eight times four? Using groups. Aunt Wilson, how many groups do I need to make? Four. Four groups. I'm going to make four groups. That's what Wilson said. What else needs to go in those groups, Wilson? Eight. Eight. In your head, did you put eight dots or did you write the number eight? I wrote the number eight. You wrote the number eight. Okay. And then what did you do, Wilson? Then I put them all together. Then you put them all together, okay? So did you add them together in your head? 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8, right? 8 plus 8 plus 8 would be 32. 32. <laughs> Did anyone else solve it a different way, 8 times 4? Did anyone else solve 8 times 4 differently? Yes, ma'am. No, I was going to do 8 Perfect. 8 times 2. What you got for me? 8 times 2. I got 8 groups and 15. 8 groups and you put two in it. Because what does this problem say? It says eight times two. Eight times two, so I'm gonna make eight groups. Okay, and how many am I putting in each? Two. Am I putting two dots or the number two in your mind? Two dots. Two dots, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 total. I like it. Does anyone else have a different way to solve this problem? Yes, ma'am. Eight plus eight. Eight plus eight. Anyone else have a different way to solve the problem? What can you tell me about these two facts and how they're related? Jaden. Because the first number is both eight. Okay, they have that in common. What else can you tell me about that fact? They're both even. They're both even? Okay, these two numbers are both even. Oh, and the answer is both even. All numbers are even, in fact, right? Right, Jada? Okay. Jada? They're all multiplication. All multiplication. Okay. What about this 2 and the 4? Yes. Okay, so you're adding, Angie just said you're adding two more eights to eight plus eight for the second problem. What else do you notice? I agree. 
Shaden? Uh, 4 plus 4 equals 8. 4 plus 4 equals 8. Okay. Right. Shaden, last one. The 4 <coughs> and 2 is like doubles because you're adding just 2 more equal 4. So this is like saying times 2. We doubled the 2 to get the 4. Did we double the 16 to get the 32? Yeah. Yeah, because you told me 16 plus 16 equals 32. So that was the connection I was hoping to make, that 8 times 2 equals 16, and 8 times 4 equals 32. And the way that we can tell that and prove it is that 2 doubled is 4, and 16 <coughs> doubled is 32. Right now, what I would like you guys to do, you guys did an awesome job. Pat yourself on the back. Nice work. Right now, what I would like you to do is once you get to your Chromebooks at your seat, you are going to go to Clever. Then you're going to go to the Roadly Rockstars Clever page. Then you're going to go to my website. <coughs> On my website, you're going to go into the Math tab, Fractions. Then you're going to put your headphones in and start watching the Equivalent Fractions video. Okay. I want you to put, open your computers, unpack me on the computers. Go to Clever. No headphones in quite yet. I'm waiting to see some Clever pages. Now I need Roadly Rockstars. Clever page. Then I need Miss Roadly's website. You may have to scroll down to find Miss Roadly's website. It has some books on it. That's what the picture is. <coughs> then I want you to go to the Math tab. Click fractions. Once you hover over math, you're going to hover. You're not going to click. Hover over math. Go to fractions. Pick one of the fractions. Once I walk around to see the fractions pictures on your screen, you can put your headphones in and begin listening to the video. You are going to need your Expo marker at the end of the video. Tell me what they just did. What did you guys just do? I'm waiting for some quiet hands. Quiet hands. Zaniah? You guys found equivalent fractions. Yes, indeed. Can someone tell me what equivalent means? Jada? Um, equal fractions. Equal fractions. So did you know that each one of those fractions you just found was equal to one another? Well, how can we prove, how can you prove that one-third is equivalent to, well, before I get ahead of myself, let me write down the fractions you guys wrote. So can someone share what our first fraction was that you guys found? Joseph? One-third. One-third. What's our second fraction? Jackson? Two-sixths. How did you get to 2 6, Jackson? Added one more. Jackson, why did you add one for the numerator? Because the numerator has a 1 in the numerator's place. So we're just going to add what's in the numerator each time. We are going to skip count by 1s. What about the denominator? What did you do for the denominator? Zaniah? Three, four, five? Did we skip count by two, Zaniah? We'll skip out 
Skip counted by threes. Can someone tell me why we skip counted by threes on the denominator? We need a new hand. These friends have already answered. Can someone tell me why we skip counted by threes on the denominators? Andy, why do we do that? Because there's a three in the denominator. We are going to skip count by whatever is in the denominator. So we're going to add three. What about the next fraction? What is our next fraction? Michaela? Three ninths. Three ninths. Does it have the same pattern? Give me a thumbs up if it has the same pattern. Where are all those thumbs? Don't we add three, guys? Six, seven, eight, nine. I should see all thumbs up. Does it have the same pattern on the top? Give me another thumbs up. Okay. It sure does have an, the same pattern on the top. Let's keep going. What's the next fraction? Antonio, what did you get? Four twelfths. Four twelfths. That's the fraction I needed, right? And what's the last fraction, Jalen Whitehead? Five. Five. What? Five. What'd you say? Five fifth. Five what? I didn't hear you. Say the number. One, one five. Fifteenths. Five fifteenths. That's a weird one, right? Can we all say five fifteenths? Five fifteenths. <laughs> Sounds funny to say, right? Five fifteenths. We're going to continue that pattern each time. So now I want us to think, how are we going to prove that one-third is equivalent to four-twelfths? What can you guys do to prove that one-third is equivalent to four-twelfths? Um, grab a fraction chart. So grab a fraction chart, okay. So we have one thing that we can use. This is a fraction chart that we could use. I can pass these out. What else could you use? What else could you use? Jada? Oh, fraction bars. Fraction bars. So we have both. So if I give you either option, a fraction table or fraction bars, do you think that you can prove to me that one-third is equivalent to four-twelfths? Yeah. Okay. If you would like a fraction table, can you raise your hand? Raise your hand. Joseph, can you pass out the fraction table to the friends who have high, high hands? If you would like fraction bars, I'm going to come around to give you a baggie of fraction bars. I want you to prove to me this question. This question says, how can you prove one-third is equivalent to four-twelfths? Once you have it on your table and you can prove it to me, we're going to share and turn and talk to our partners at our table. Thank you. You're welcome. Andy, can you explain what you did to on this? Go to the third and shade it. Okay. And then I put the line down. Why did you draw that line? To make sure that um, M equals to mm. four twelfths. Four twelfths. So are, can you write one third equals four twelfths right here for me so that I know? Just like right here, so I know what you got, you what you were working on. One third. And you can prove that to me, right? And you just did that by, by making sure that one third and then drawing your line down. Can you prove to me these other fractions also equal one third? So you can erase the four twelfths and then also prove to me the rest of them while I, everyone else is still working. Ms. Jada, can you explain what you're doing? I am equaling one third, so I, am, I already did. What the typical four twelfths that I've worked on more. You're working on more. So so you have your one third, right? Your original fraction. And you did four twelfths. So are you, you proved that this was exactly equal, right? And now you're moving on to your next one. So now you have two six. I love it. You did an awesome job. Oh wow. Antonio, look at all that. So you skip counted all the way up. You kept skip counting. So if we had 40, if we had a pizza that we sliced into 42 pieces, 14 of those slices out of 42 pieces would be equivalent to one third. Can you prove to me with your fraction bars how one third equals four twelfths? I did. Oh, you already did. Come on, dude. I didn't see that. How are you doing there, Byron? 
Looking good, looking good. Give me a thumbs up if you're ready to turn and talk and share with the people next to you. I have one, two, three, four. I'll give you one more minute. I want you guys to turn and talk to the people sitting next to you when I tell you when about how you proved one third is equivalent to four twelfths. And I want you to be able to answer, how did you know that they were equal? You guys ready to rock and roll? I want you to turn to the people sitting next to you. If there's a group of three, you're going to need to three talk together about how to prove one third is equal to four twelfths. Go for it. How'd you boys do it? Equals to four twelfths because four twelfths can light up. Four times one. I love, I love the turn and talk and how you guys confident in one another's uh, work. I like how Alexa showed you how to do it. How did you solve the problem? Okay, you did the skip counting method. Did you prove it with your fraction bars? Not yet. Okay, maybe Alexa can help you prove it with your fraction bars. Alexa, can you two work together on that? Well, so, since you don't have a turn and talk partner, can you help? Can you show me what you did? The bigger numbers are smaller. So the bigger the denominator, the smaller the pieces. Huh. I'm going to ask you to tell me that in a second, okay? Can I have a silent coyote in three, two, one? And hands off of the manipulatives, that means the fraction bars or the fraction tables. Can someone raise their hand to tell me how did you prove one third equals four twelfths? Joseph? Okay, so Joseph said he took his fraction table and he shaded the amounts and then saw that they equaled the same amount. Can someone else do it the same way or a different way? If you did it the same way as Joseph, can you connect with Joseph? Someone did it a different way? Can someone explain that? Jada? I lined it up with my bars. Okay, how did you do that with your fraction bars? So I grabbed four, four twelves. And after I grabbed four twelfths, I grabbed one third and put the one third on top and it equaled. Oh, so Jada just said that instead she used her fraction bars and she laid it on top of the four twelfths to see if it was equal, not just beside it. Does anyone else have an observation that they made of how they proved their answer? Yes, Jada? I, I got my line of thirds mm -hmm. and I went all the way down with my marker and I got that's an awesome job. I'm going to show what Shayna did. Shayna just explained he took one third, he went all the way to the end of the one third, and then he took his marker and went all the way down and realized that one, two, three, four out of the 12 pieces are colored in. Wilson? So I did this on use of nine. Uh huh. And to go to the full 12 because when, you, because when the bigger the denominator is, the smaller the pieces are. Huh. Did you guys also notice that? Anyone else notice that the bigger the denominator, meaning the higher the number, the smaller the pieces would get. Okay. Awesome job, my friends. We hope that you enjoyed our lesson today. Learning about mirrors on. Mirrors on. I can. I can. Find. Find. Equivalent. Equivalent. Fractions. Fractions. Using skip counting. Using